this video, I'll be breaking down what sync licensing is and how to get started as a music producer. And before I start, I just want to shout out Excalibur Zero. He's pretty much the one that introduced me to sync and taught me everything that I pretty much know now. He also posts a lot more stuff on his Instagram and YouTube about sync licensing, so go chuck him a follow. But anyway, what is sync licensing? In the simplest terms, it's a placement of your music on a TV show, movie, video game, ad, anything with visual media. And what's the benefits of sync licensing? It can be another stream of income, and once you get enough placements, it can be a form of passive income. And getting your music placed on your favorite show is a crazy feeling. And this is what legendary producer Timberland had to say about sync licensing. Don't think about a placement for a song. The sync fee is where it's at. That's where it's at, and that's for a lot of producers, a lot of money. They ain't you know, they ain't me seeing 50, 60 bands, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm going to show you what a project file for a sync track looks like. The main difference between having a track for sync licensing and having, say, a beat for an artist is having like fills, cutouts, transitions, rises, all of that. So this is just a quick preview of a track I made for sync yesterday. So as you heard, there's a bunch of rises, fills, dropouts, all of that, just for when the music editor comes in, he's just got a bunch of different parts to play with. And as you can see, the track progresses, so in the last eight bars, everything is going on, while in the first eight or so bars in the intro, there's nothing much going on, and that's what you want to make the sync have the track progress, rather than just an eight bar loop playing throughout the whole beat. And if you're producing music for sync, everything has to be from scratch. Obviously not like drum sounds and all that, but you have to make your melody from scratch. You're allowed to use websites like Splice and anything royalty free, but you just have to make sure that they are royalty free. And when you drag them into your project, you have to manipulate them a bit, like speed them up, pitch them down, reverse them, stuff like that. For me, I mainly only use Splice for like vocals, textures, accents, stuff like that. And you also can't sample anything or anyone else because libraries and music supervisors want you to be what we call one stop which means you own 100% of your masters and 100% of your publishing, which just makes it easier for them and for you to clear. So now I broke down how a sync track actually sounds like. Now I'm gonna break down how to actually get placements. So there are two main people you wanna reach out to, music libraries and music supervisors. The music supervisor is responsible for selecting what music is used in say a TV show, movie, ad, etc. And a music library is a catalog of tracks that are being pre-cleared but are available for sync licensing. This is where you're typically gonna submit your tracks to. And so now, where do you find music supervisors and music libraries? Firstly, I'm going to talk about music supervisors. Say your favorite TV show is Top Boy or say Euphoria. You're going to come up to Google and say Top Boy IMDB. Go on IMDB. You're going to come down to all cast and crew. And then what I do is I do Control Command F and then search up music. And there you go. You have Ed, Abby and Toby Williams. And so then once you've found their names, what I would mainly do is go find their name, copy their name, go into Google, and then search up music supervisor. And then there you go. Now you've got his Instagram that you can reach out to, and then you've got his LinkedIn. And so now, here's the next tip. But now that you're looking at his LinkedIn, you can see, oh, he's managing director at Leland. What is Leland? What I would do is click Leland, and then this would come up. And as you can see, music supervision and composer representation, which is what we want. So then you can scroll down a bit until you see if they've got a website, and then click that. And here you go, now you just found your first music library. And even better, is got all the emails of the music supervisors and their position. So now you can go out and contact them. And here it says share music. So this is probably the, play, the best place to submit your music or you can submit to the music supervisors directly. Another tip for finding music supervisors if you're staying on LinkedIn is to go to the side where people also view. Here you go, music supervisor at Leland. Another music supervisor, director, music supervisor music supervisor so what i would do is just open them all in a new tab do the same process search up ed bailey music supervisor see if i have a website or contact information put them in a google spreadsheet and then just repeat that for however long you want and the same goes with music libraries as you can see here leland on the side 64 music which i know is a music library big sync music felt music butter music and sound and then as i said before same process open it up oh they've got a website bang 
there you go, another another website you can add to the music library list. And then contact, and then if you scroll down or you find a contact page, just go to their email, and then you can just send an email to them. And another tip when you're using IMDB to find music supervisors is say you like Top Boy and you want to find shows similar to Top Boy, just scroll down all the way to the bottom and then you'll find uh, more like this section and then you just repeat it. You go click Snowfall, click all cast and crew, command F, music supervisor, all of that. So that's pretty much my favorite way on how to find music supervisors. Next, I'm going to show you how to find music libraries. There's a couple different ways, but one way that I like that shows you a ton of them is to go up to your PRO. So for me, APRA, and I'll just search up like sync libraries or production music libraries. And then here you go, the first link would be a supply list. And now it just shows you a bunch of music libraries that you could submit to. So Beats Fresh Music, Blonde Beats, Extreme Music, etc. And here's another example using PRS, which I think is a UK PRO. And once again, you just search up PRS production music libraries. And then here you go, 1107 Studios, Absolute Music Library, Alibi Music Library, etc. The next way is to search music libraries through all the big labels like Sony, BMG, Universal, Warner, etc. So you would just search up Universal Music Production Library List. And either you click the first one or you go straight to Universal. And then now you've got a list of all the libraries distributed by Universal. And through here, you can just do the same research where you'd say, let's go Energy Music, Energy Music Library. And sometimes they won't have a website. So it's just a bunch of trial and error, just going through a bunch, seeing who has a website and if they have contact information. So here it doesn't look like they have any any contact information, but sometimes I'll check their Facebook. But on this Facebook, it doesn't look like they have any contact information. And this link just redirects you back to the Universal Music page. The next way I use to find music libraries is to just Google music library directory. And then you can click first two links. And so now you've got a list of music libraries that you can submit to. And you've even got their contact name and contact email, which pretty much does the work for you. And same with this website, you've got a list of a bunch of music libraries. And now how do you actually contact them? First, you want to create like an album of say eight to 12 tracks of similar sounding songs or beats to say, for example, dark orchestral trap or chill R&B hip hop. So once you've got your eight to 12 tracks, you want to then upload it to say Dropbox, SoundCloud, Disco, anything where you can stream your music. And then sometimes on the music library page, there'll be like a submission form that you can click and then just enter your details. Or most of the time, if they don't have a submission form is I'll just email them directly. So when I reach out to libraries or music supervisors, I have a template that I follow. I don't copy and paste it and send it to everyone. I personalize it to so say if I know their name, I'll put their name and I'll put their library in. So say this one, for example, the title would be music composer submission with my name. Then, hey, insert name. I wanted to reach out to see if you're currently accepting submissions or I wanted to reach out to see if Premiere Tracks is currently accepting submissions. I recently came across your work and was extremely inspired by your work with insert some of the credits that they have. So say it could be the NBA, Netflix, Euphoria, stuff like that. I think I could be a great fit because I specialize in insert your genre. And then here I just put some previous placements that I have just to prove that I've got credibility. If you don't, you can skip this part. Then I'd say if you currently are accepting submissions, I would love to share some insert album name. So dark orchestral hip hop or chill R&B. Then I would put a link to the albums and then I would write, let me know if this music fits your roster. I'm more than happy to make any revisions to make sure these tracks are perfect for your library. I look forward to hearing from you and I appreciate your time and consideration. Super basic, kind of short. I think this one is a bit longer. I usually don't submit two albums. Usually I just submit one, but this for this situation, I decided to do two. Then after a week, I would send a follow-up email and it would say something along the lines of, hey, I wanted to submit some songs for your library. I just wanted to make sure it didn't end up in your spam, I know you're busy, something along the lines of that. And so that's how I would reach out to say a music supervisor or music library. And now some common questions I get asked all the time. How do I get paid from sync? Sometimes a library or the supervisor offers a upfront fee or what we call a sync fee. It's kind of rare, but it happens. Most of the time, it's just based on royalties. The next question is, what's a standard deal? There is no standard deal, but most of the time it's 50-50 down the middle for everything. The company or the library would take 50% of the publishing share and you would retain your writer's share. But what I would recommend is just have someone look over the contract before you sign off anything. Another question I get asked all the time is what's the best library for pop or rap or R&B? Usually libraries aren't genre specific. Obviously there's some libraries that might be focused on 
trailer music or classical music. But once you have a look at their website, you'll be able to tell, okay, my music can kind of fit here with them. Or, okay, this library focuses on pop. I don't really do pop, so I'm not going to apply for them. And to help you guys get started on your sync music licensing journey, I provided a link to 30 music libraries that I've personally submitted to and that you guys can submit to. It's all free. All you need to do is just put in your email and you'll get it. The next question I see all the time is, can I submit the same song or music to different libraries? So when you're starting out and you haven't signed exclusively to a library, the answer is yes, you can send that out to whoever. But once a library wants to take on your album exclusively, then no, you can't send that out anymore. But if a library is non-exclusive, then means you can continue sending it out. The next question is, what happens once you sign to a library? Once you sign to a library, then the process just repeats. You make another album, you do a bunch of networking, find out some new libraries to submit to, and you just keep submitting, or you can submit to the library you just signed to. And some other good resources to get into sync licensing is Xcalibur Zero, as I mentioned before. XJ Will is also really good. And Sync My Music. They're all on YouTube and they're all post content related to sync licensing. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, you can DM me or comment them and I'll be, be sure to answer them. But yeah, peace.